uh, bylaw re revisions. Has everyone signed in to the uh, sign-in sheet, please? You have it? Okay. If you can sign in, Danny, that'd be great. Thank you. So um, the Planning Commission has been working over pretty much the past year on updating the uh, the bylaw, which includes zoning regulations and subdivision regulations. Uh, primarily, this was all initiated by um, the push to try and create more density for housing in uh, the village districts, as well as the core business district. Um, primarily, there were some other things that we did just to uh, uh, bring our our bylaws uh, in uh, into uh, accordance with uh, state regulations. So there were some other tweaks that we've done. We did some definition tweaks, um, pretty much just a lot of housekeeping, but the primary thing was um, the big bigger things were in the village district and the uh, core business, we dropped the, um, reduced the minimum lot size requirement in half. Um, so to create more dense possible housing. Um, there are some other things that, and I'm, it's good to see a, a good group of people here. So uh, that's briefly what uh, overview, overview, very brief of what we've done. The list that you saw posted was everything, every T that was crossed, I that was dotted that we corrected throughout. So we had to list all those. So it looked like a major overwrite, but in reality, it wasn't that serious. But what we are here for is a public hearing, and this is your part of the meeting where you can uh, bring any concerns, ask any questions, and we will um, we'll, we'll answer those um, at that time. Do you want to talk about Two Rivers and the money, where the money came from there? Yeah, sure. So um, the, there was a grant from uh, Two Rivers to, well, they administered the grant. It was a statewide grant through a uh, number of towns that that chose to be part of it. So Two Rivers were was our sounding board, and they reviewed things to make sure that that we were in conformance with with statute. Um, and they participated in most of our meetings uh, to answer questions and to give guidance on technical issues throughout. Does that cover it? Mm -hmm. Um, so again, um, if something sparked your interest, just just uh, speak up. No, no question is is not going to be. You know, we're going to answer everything you have. Uh, maybe there's concerns you have on what uh, what you saw if you've looked it over. And we'll be happy to to deal with those. This is the time. There'll be a. This is our only scheduled public hearing. If there's something major that. Um, is brought up that we need to deal with. We'll schedule another one. Um, assuming not, then it will be what we have will be sent to the select board. And um, from what we're looking at the time-wise right now, it'll be sometime in June that they'll have their public hearing. And again, you can come to that with any concerns. So that's kind of the process. I forget. Um, just uh, really housekeeping on um, it's uh, chapter 4.11.2 or paragraph whatever it is um, 4.11.2 this purposes yep yeah uh, so there's a couple of uh, okay. well, it's all using your wording but small thing no there's one word that, okay uh, <laughs> We have um, okay, perfect. Thanks. Regional forest blocks identified as critical for migrating climate change. So we could change that to mitigating. All right, uh, mitigating. Change. Okay. And okay. then just for terms of just um, ease of reading, the, the there's a couple of prepositions that are a little bit off. You could just read back down through that paragraph. Okay. There's a list of things. Perfect. And that says are important for wildlife and wildlife corridors, comma, and then it should be four re irreplaceable recreational scenic areas, comma. Okay. And 
for maintain rather than maintain. Yeah. Okay. So strike right. strike the maintain, right? Okay. Yeah, you got that in for maintaining and safe. Sure. Okay. That's that's all. Just oh perfect. Well, I, this is nice too. Thank you for writing it up. That's awesome. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, great. Yeah, sorry about that. No, thank you. I thought we had to call. See page. Yeah, it was, six. it's a pretty cumbersome paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. got that. Well, all right. See page. All right, perfect. All right. Thanks very much. <clears throat> Anything else that piqued your interest? I'll just say I know there was um, some speculation about uh, this addressing um, uh, yard junk whatever, however you want to put that. This has nothing to do with with that. The only thing in here um, that comes close to that is salvage yards. Um, those are, those are, um, those are controlled by the state. Uh, the only part that we come in is we have to just basically issue um, a, uh, like, like we have to keep record of the site. Um, I'll get the, I'll get the, um, terminology here in a sec. People that you can talk to on that. Um, yeah, and we, yeah, again, we, it's, um, 3.25. 0.25. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things it talks about is operating, um, they basically have stuff to do about operating, and right. there's a big difference about uh, operating, um, and they would, you know, you guys, I guess, would do a certificate of approval type thing. Um, but they basically focus their oh. time on that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, the, basically, the state is the one who manages it. We just, you know. Yeah. The DRB has to certify the site. Yeah, and I don't think that, that we're going to really have any operating salving yards I in, the, think so. in the future. Yeah, we have to. But um, there is some wording that's kind of off on that part of it. In in 3.25 salvage yards? Um, not in that, in the wording of um, in the back where it talks about. The definition? The definition, okay. yeah. Yeah, what's in the definition ten. talking about having stuff and having an operational salvage yard? Um, it's it, it, it's okay to have have resources and stuff as long as you're not in the operation of that. So by saying you have those, therefore you are a salvage yard is is a not a legal wording. Um, so have you know, and it it is tricky with that calling something junk because you know it, someone's junk is someone is possibly a pretty good resource. Um, that's easily proven. That you know, um, especially during the last few years of what we have gone through um, with getting supplies and things like that, you know, certain things really do become valuable. Um, so in the definition of it, it would be nice to try to figure out a way to, you know, operating salvage yard compared to somebody that collects antiques or, mm -hmm. you know, old tractors or whatever. But that was taken right from statute, wasn't it? I don't know. I'd have to go back and look because okay. we didn't change it. It's been there for, we didn't change okay, the well, definition, but we'll- We'll double check that. Yeah, but yeah. thank you for mentioning it. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely look at it, you're right. Because I see what you're, I get what you're saying. Yeah. If it said operation, like more where it defined salvage yard, we, you know, at the beginning, so we could, we'll make yeah. sure that it matches the statute. And we, what the, what the, the gentleman from the salvage yard, um, well, I visited with him and he was talking about the concern with a lot of the rusted out stuff that's coming along, you know, the collection of, 
newer vehicles and some of them that aren't very aren't recyclable um, we have a lot of you know battery problem that is going to be a, a real big problem with some of the rusted out um, Priuses and stuff and all vehicles have that rust problem in Vermont and so that's what their concern was was that what are we going to do with this when it starts to be really starts to show up right um and there there is there is recycling stuff coming down the line but the general people that are starting to be involved with that are are pushing that over the bank and these items we don't you know we just want to be careful of of those kind of you know that kind of stuff so basically you want to make sure that what we use for the definition of salvage yard is more in line with the statute to make sure that they're both yeah, yeah they're driving kind of with that sure. um yeah that's a good point um, but and, and it is something that we we've, we've talked about before about yeah. that's a, you know how that works yeah sure okay. all right definitely thank you and um you're right i, I encourage you to come to the uh, select board public hearing to make sure that that yeah. final wording that we put in. Yep, yeah, I found that really important to come and then yep. um, to be involved with the town, with the, the rec department and the rotary and the food shop. We do have a, a real nice diverse group of older to younger yep. people that, and it's fun when we do have a, an event to see them all come together and everybody has different skills and uh, we need to to realize that you know certain people have skills that can bring to the table young old um, and so we need diversity I guess and, and part of that part of you know that's just how the town works that's right that's what makes it that's what makes the town all right well so we'll definitely look at that thank yeah. you. <laughs> And I guess one thing I was also saw was about like the campground type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it just seemed like there was a way too much regulation on what it would take to actually create a campground in our town. And I was thinking we need to be a little bit open minded about that. And I know many gentlemen and elderly people that had dreams of setting up tents or have small campgrounds um and we just need to have draw to our little community and have things to come and it would be would be great to have some kind of a campground um we just wouldn't want to have too much we we don't want to make it too hard for people to improve on their properties improve on their homes um so, I mean, we define it in commercial outdoor recreation, any use of land or structures for the provision of private outdoor recreational services that do not involve construction of substantial structures, examples, travel trailer parks, campgrounds, tennis courts, golf courses. And then we made it, and, and I think in some cases, if it's, so since it's commercial outdoor recreation, um, I think the only real um caveat on it was that we i think we made it a conditional use it was just said that each site had to have a hundred feet of art barrier and uh, a uh, certain amount of material put in and to me it just said like wow that would be a really big chunk to even think about creating something like that yeah and, dana didn't, didn't you address I, yeah, you I mentioned that I spoke with the, the last meeting where we talked about this and that's a that seems to be an extremely large lot size requirement. Yeah, for, if we go for, to for, for a camp, our state parks and stuff like that, which we have amazing state parks, they there. I mean, we could be camping right beside. You know, you guys could have your tent right there. They do. They don't. They don't have that huge of a. They don't have that hard of a um, regulation. Um, I. I do speak with a lot of, you know, people that, you know, would say, Hey, I'd like to rent a few spots on my property. And I, I would like to see that be able to happen just because, you know, we all got to pay our taxes and pay our gas bills and stuff. And any way that our town is great, the income would be pro in my, yeah. in my opinion. 
right page nine it's supposed to be oh, here we go. Yeah. all right let's see um it's travel trailers okay number here is that a short-term rentals i think we're just trying to find the right section yeah that doesn't address the uh wasn't the that, side. that was under um like hamlet wasn't that where was that the whole that camp camp for all size in hamlet? They, so under oh, 6.1.3 oh six okay thank you <clears throat> oh recreational vehicles parks camp 6.13 all right here she's right here we go she, she always got it all right, so it says each recreational vehicle lot shall be at least 2,500 square feet in area and have a compact gravel parking surface at least 20 feet in width. Um, that's fine. Sites restricted to tents shall be no less than 1,000 square feet. Each lot should be located dry and well-drained area. There shall be an undeveloped area of not less than 100 feet in depth between all recreational vehicle tent sites and the adjacent property lines and the travel portion of any way. So do you have an idea of, you know, sort of depth if it's not like a hundred, do you have a... I would just try to bring it, you know, take a little bit of some of the, you know, the, the things off of some of, you know, just the general, when I, when I went through it, it just, it is, it is quite a lot to take in. I went through it three different times. It is a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. And I wanted to, <laughs> you know, I wanted to read it to see how it was. And just, um, it, the, the hard part for me is I didn't know where we're starting from. So right. I, I don't know what we already have. Oh yeah. Well, that's why we did it. I printed it, published it this way. So you could see the only changes we made were in color. Oh, yes, okay. yeah, yeah. So I didn't have this, I just had another one. So that, yeah, that's how to take the two. Helpful. Yeah, so okay. but when you camp, do you think it's more like hmm, 75 feet, 50 feet? I mean, we talked about it's it, it's pretty variable, you know. It kind of like it's, it's kind of wherever you can find a spot, mm. and like our, our photography where we live is. You know, yeah, oh, well, here's a spot I can set up a tent site. It's flat. So then, you know, you would try to cultivate that spot. And I just, it, it would be fun to have people to be able to have mm -hmm. uh, lesser limitations to okay. get projects yeah. out. Absolutely. And so that's just the general thing. Um, the, my general feeling was if, if you got to go to the town to get permits for every, thing then it's going to really take up a lot of you guys's time yeah. and it's going to stall a lot of time for people to to yeah. create and to get going yeah. it's also and, the other side of that is that sometimes people don't think about is that for the town the zoning permit helps in the sense that you know the the grand list is what drives the town and the state for our tax bases how your school tax is set how everything is done so it's helpful to us to know what has happened. So if someone adds a building lot or builds a garage or builds a, because it raises, it adds value or subtracts value if they tore something down to the grand list, which is what we base taxes on. So if the grand list rises and most, you know, if the budget doesn't rise, then taxes can lower. So it kind of keeps everybody on an even keel. So part of the reason for zoning is yes, you know, for property development and trying to give people property rates, but it also helps the town drive that you know that grand list that you want to be accurate because our grand list goes to the state and that's how they set your school taxes so everybody you know all the grand list is drives all communities so part of it's that but well, yeah, i understand fine. how that works yeah just saying the for somebody to come in all the time yeah no one get yeah. office it might overtax <laughs> what you guys already have to do um and our governor has uh, has talked about how we have to worry about getting too much regulations to, and it will affect the growth. Yep. So, you know, when we do do this new review of our bylaws, we have to really make sure, and, you know, and I know you guys have been, but 
we really have to step lightly on what we put a, a thing on because it may affect somebody not even doing a project at all. Right. Well, um, be, you know, a lot of people yeah. will do the project and then tax them on it. But if they have to jump through some hoops and it, it, it may really stem some growth. Sure. You but, know, yeah, okay. My concern. This being, oh, what, uh, oh, five years ago or so, we used to have zoning bylaws and subdivision bylaws. And so there are two different things. Now it's combined, it streamlines the process better than it was before. So we have made improvement in that regard. Um, the other thing we have to be careful about too is safety. I'm sure if David Al Aldrigetti was here, he, if, if there's an undocumented trailer park with X amount of units in somewhere, I'm sure that the safety organizations would like to know where they are and how they get to it yeah. when they have a call. So, you know, those type of things are, it's yeah. a balance. It's yes, a balance. it is a balance. And yeah. So, yeah, we'll make but, a note if it's 100 feet. Yeah, right. but certainly the size of it, that did come up and, and we didn't go anywhere with it. So um, we will definitely look at that because, yeah, 50, 2,500 square feet can be. Can be hard to find a flat spot in your own. Right. Yeah. Well, to, to, to apply for that. And that's not to say that the lot itself has to be all flat. It would just have to be no no more dense than that. Yeah. But, but that does sound. Yeah. Because it would be it would be great if we could have a campground in Bethel. Sure. It would be, be, be fantastic. But the only problem that we have, it would have to be most of our open areas are floodplain. Mm -hmm. So it would have to be a, up in the hill somewhere. I mean, but they do, they do uh, state parks and, you know, all up through Lake Champlain and they're right on the water. I, I yeah, don't know how. That's a little different because the lake does rise and fall, but it's not like, as we've seen with Irene, you yeah. know, any of these fields out through here. Yeah. Um, there are some higher elevation fields around, but. Yeah. Um, but that would be, you know, it only takes someone to, uh, to decide to uh, get into it. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, uh, and kind of on the, touching on that base is that where a lot of these people are doing like a hip camp or Airbnb things. And that's, I think, is a good thing to bring people into our area and then they get to see our schools and stuff. So we want to be, you know, it says stuff about you can't, you know, have short term rental and uh, tent or um, camper or things like that. And there's huge um, uh, th there's huge things where people do rent old campers or rent, uh, 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 what do you call them? They have those little, um, tiny homes. Or, yeah. Kind of tiny homes with those, um, yurt things. Or oh, yurt, yeah. Yeah. You know, they have them and they're really nice and it's, uh, you know, fairly low investment for somebody to create and it brings people to Bethel and it kind of brings, outdoor people and you know people that we kind of want to explore some of our trails and see some of our history and stuff um because we have a lot to offer we just need need places for people to come mm -hmm. and you know when we have our snowmobile show and stuff we have a real challenge of getting anybody to to, to stay you know that's a that's a hard thing for having people come here um, even relatives when they show up you you know, there's not a whole lot for them to stay. And so. <clears throat> Related to our uh, commercial recreational areas, uh, campgrounds, uh, health and sa uh, sanitation, I assume would be part of any development along that line. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, all that would have to be dealt with through the through the DRB process. And that's all you all you guys? Uh, no, this is the planning commission. Planning. Okay. Yeah. So the planning commission um writes the guidelines and the DRB implements it. So when you have a proposal, you go to the DRB 
uh, development review board to uh, to go through that process. Yeah, now that's, that's new. That's new, right? Because it used to be the just the town manager in that, or is it always had that? No, there's oh. if you fit if you fit the category, what you're trying to do, you meet setback and and everything, and, and it does. There's nothing that you're doing that kicks it into uh, a DRB hearing. The zoning administrator, Therese, can issue that. Yeah, okay. So if you see under the categories where it says permitted use, yeah, yeah. permitted use, then Kelly and I can approve those permits. Right. But if it says conditional use or it's a subdivision, then you go to the DRB. Okay. Yeah. Development Review Board. Yeah. So it's a easy process. And something else to remember that Eric reminded me of uh, is that after this process is done, um, most likely in September, uh, we'll be starting a review of the town plan. So the bylaws are governed by the town plan. So that's a time also to get involved to make sure everything that's in that yep. is in. Now, I was curious if we could use the board out here a little bit better, like if we had to have the fire ban recently, um, because there is a lot of people that aren't on the on the online as much yeah. and so that little board and like for this meeting also i yeah. was hoping yeah, we usually just use it for the there. select board meetings because that way we yeah. can do but it would be it months. would be handy and a lot of people do look at it i, I do I'm that sure. would be a, a great thing to bring to the select board yeah they have more okay okay Okay, so Teresa. Um, because somebody had a fire yeah. recently and they just yeah, didn't know. That's, a, fire, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's an excellent suggestion. Yeah. And just a thought. Mm -hmm. I've been to a lot of Vermont state parks and they're not all on flat land. Yeah. I mean, if you go out to Gifford State Park, you go up to Silver Lake, it's flat where, well, Silver Lake where the water is, but all the campgrounds go all go up and then they're all leveled off. So to try to find one big fat flat piece of property. Yeah. Most state parks, probably around the lake they are, but yeah. generally state parks are yeah, they go up. They, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yes, sir. This is a rhetorical. It's a statement in the form of question. Okay. What has happened since the late 18th century that will require such a missile? There's so much in here, 118 pages. Granted, a lot of it is redundant. I mean, it could have been half of this or a quarter. It's so redundant. <laughs> Some of these things are absurd. You're going to tell people how many can be in a bedroom? You're going to tell people about the caretaker's house and the size of it? How many of this and this? I mean, you're going to have Big Brother coming in the middle of the night to see who's in the bedrooms. There's so much in here that is a function of you folks just sitting down to make rules because it gives you a lot of power and a feeling that you're accomplishing something and you're very important. And that's what this that is. is. Most of this part is all this. about, all about, you feel very empowered and a lot of it I just can't believe what has happened since the late 18th century that require not a half, three quarters of what's in here. And that's rhetorical, so it doesn't yeah, require sure. anything. No. Well, just let me just say that um, these bylaws in some okay. form uh, have been in effect in this town since 1986 or seven, I believe. So it's not anything new. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't, I have very good hearing, but you're speaking very low. Okay, okay. The, the bylaws back in the day, the zoning and the subdivision have been in, in effect in this town since the mid 80s, mid to late 80s. So it's not anything that we've added now. It's been something that since we're part of two rivers, that's the regional planning commission. And I agree, uh, some of it is a little bit of overreach, but it's the, it's the I mean, it's either we have no zoning regulations and we leave everything up to Act 250, who don't even live in the town. So at least you have a board who are town residents that you can come and talk to about things. Um, and I, I I struggle with that too. And that's the reason why I got on the, the development review board years ago, because I had a project that 
I felt was reasonable and I got a lot of hassle over it. So I went on the DRB and tried to make it work with people, try to work with people with what's allowed here. So I agree it's a bit <coughs> overbearing, but it is what it is at this point. Some of it too what is my driven concerns. by the state of Vermont. So some of it is legislation that we're handed. We don't have any say because Vermont is a Dillon's rule is a Dillon rule state, which means the only authority we have as towns is what is granted to us by the state. So when they pass, you know, some of the legislation they pass, we have no choice. We they say if you have zoning, you have to do this. And so you're in good company. Um, you know, if you're really we're looking for people on the planning commission and and the TR. Yep. <laughs> and the energy yeah. committee and <laughs> With these bylaws, I guess is what I'm getting back to where we just got to worry about, we don't want to overtax our public ser servants, the people that are doing it. We don't want to get people upset when, you know, we want to have it so people are happy to pay their taxes. We want people to say, you know what, my road was graded the other day. I'm psyched. I'm going to pay my taxes. Right. We want to have people come in and say thank you for working and doing this for us we don't we're just worried that by putting too many bylaws and kind of mucking up some of the the processes of having and, and i totally agree that that we need to have stuff that keeps things in line but we're just always getting you know the taxes have always been going up we're not going down we're getting we're getting less and less of everything, and then all of a sudden we get a huge thing that says this, and it is confusing for a lot of people to read this, and sure. they get upset about it. And we have been having regular monthly meetings, sometimes twice a month for a while, to, to talk about it and get input, and, you know, definitely, so. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. yeah. It's, we, 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 read it. we don't want to tell you every time we read it, and it is, but we agree. Yes. Anybody so for many years, I had a place in Bristol, Bristol Notch, mm -hmm. surrounded by a national forest. And I went to the town to ask a lot of questions in terms of, because it was, it was 40 acres and it had a stream running through it that fed Middlebury with 40% of its water, quite a stream. So I had to be very careful what I did. And I went to them, and <laughs> this is the other side of the coin, which is probably no good either. They told me, you do whatever you want to do. <laughs> so I'm saying to myself, you mean I can build a high-rise apartment? I didn't ask that, but I'm thinking that's crazy. So I ended up building a log cabin, and um, the manager of Middlebury uh, sued me because he said by doing so I was going to pollute their reservoir of water, their water. So I had to go through a whole procedure with selectmen and a lawyer and I finally got an okay because they told the Forest Service not to grant me permission to put the road through their uh, national forest land to my property. So Forest Service listened to them and did that until I got the selectmen to agree that that it would be okay and I wouldn't be polluting their the water, which of course I would go to lengths not to do. But um, they, I was there for many years. I just sold the place a couple of years ago. And um, it was a real wilderness retreat because you had national forests all around. This was a private piece. But it was the right 100%. 180 degrees from this, which is probably no good either. But strike that balance. I'm sorry. I'm trying to, yeah, balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something. So, so, yeah, I was, but having, you know, knowing that, that there was sort of no, no requirements, no restrictions, Bristol seemed to be a pretty thriving town. I don't know how many of you here are familiar with Bristol. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's 
the man who invented the ballpoint pen lived just up the road from me, Val Lust. And he had a big spread and did things and he didn't bother anyone. Yeah, it's 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 a dilemma because as they say, Royalton has no zoning. Um Dunbridge has no zoning. Royalton's been thriving really good too, you know. And, and we have we have a very good opportunity for get a lot of stuff done here and to bring a lot here. You know, we we have a lot of fun in Bethel. Mm -hmm. Um and there's a lot of go-getters in Bethel, and sometimes a lot of the go-getters are, aren't aren't don't fit into the the molds, you know. And that everybody's so different, right? Right. And I say the DRB tries to work with whatever whatever comes to us, and it's not like we've had a few subdivisions, which is good lately, come to us, which means people are trying to create some more housing out there within the guidelines of our of our regulations. Um, but typically, it's not like we're terribly overburdened with with uh, applications for things. And that may be part of it is they look at it and say, I'm not going to deal with going through the process. But, um, you know, we do what we can. The, the town office mm -hmm. personnel um, are willing to talk with anyone, talk them through what what needs to be done, go through the, the bylaws with them to help them understand. Um, so we do. I think yeah. the town does what they yeah we've had a lot of comments as we people can. saying that the process is easy and but we always try and turn around the past but. yeah I, I i hear you as far as the number of pages of information yeah. well, I, does I, anybody I, else have any questions i did read this whole thing so a lot, but again i found so much to be redundant yeah and some of it's redundant for a reason but um, i want to sink in <laughs> no, it's just that it's very complex. Yeah, it is because Thanks. some things relate to others, and you know we're always finding things in there that uh, are interesting. Yeah, interesting. I had to roll my eyes at some of it. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did, and you're not alone on that. Hmm. Believe it or not. Yeah. Any other specific concerns as far as? Um, hey, Rick. Yes. Hi, uh, Paul Valley. Um, Rick, can you talk a little bit about the rationale and the reasoning behind um, changing the lot size requirements by a half and what the advantages or disadvantages of that? Oh, sure. Well, the advantage is, yep, the, the advantage is to try to create more housing, more opportunity for housing, um, as is in great need right now. Um, so unfortunately, although, we worked with the with the conservation commission who have representatives here tonight. They had they had concerns about our initial plan, um, which was to expand that a little further in the outer districts. Um, so we did scale that back. Um, we did want to uh, increase density in the Hamlet district. However, for whatever reason, it's that is specific in our town plan that it, it can be no larger. Um, than what current exists, so we were not able to. We'll address that hopefully in the in our in our town plan revisions uh, because the Hamlet districts again are more dense areas of of uh, of dwellings and uh, could could have more density there. But was it also medium density that we were going to reduce? Right. right to? Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. So there's a couple things that if the town plan already says we can't do it, it says then, shall be. Yeah, yeah. Then we can't do it for the zoning regs. So the town plan would have to change because that was one of the things we were thinking about doing was reducing the lot size and medium density district from four acres to two acres, right? And but we couldn't because it said that in the town plan. Because that was the big push for two rivers. There was seven towns or the state of Vermont is supposed to be a you know, by what are we supposed to be? How many housing units short by 2030? So that was their thing was to increase density so that people, our thought was you don't have to, but it would give people flexibility to do more with their land if they were allowed to subdivide or something to, to give them more freedom to do so, but we couldn't. So when we do the town plan in September, we're going to have to take a look at that. So, right. So which areas were you allowed to do that in? Uh, village and core business. All right. Well, village is, you know, routinely very small lots to begin with. Right. Um, 
but nothing outside, let's say on the Gilead or out Christian Hill or out in those kinds of areas? Uh, not at this point. We, we, right. We might later, but we have yeah. to do the town plan first. Didn't you? Yes, we can have accessory units. You can. Yep, right. we did add, add provisions for more accessory right, units. Right. right, thanks, thanks, Danny. Yep, yep, to help, to help, uh, you know, do uh, add an apartment over a garage, that sort of thing, in your existing property. So, so you can have some income from that as well as provide housing. Um, but, but that does not provide for clusters, cluster housing. No, because there's no room really to do that in those areas we do we do encourage in you know in in the uh, rural and conservation we do encourage cluster um, housing in those areas it's it's written in our in our bylaws um, and plan unit development is a part of our bylaws okay so a plan unit development right could take place on a larger parcel yes parcel. right Right, and there's a, whole, there's a whole, whole section. section on that in here. Yeah. Well, I, think, I think back a few years ago, the state started to allow accessory housing for people wanting to keep their parents, you know, for example, from uh, on site by allowing them to place housing on their existing residential lots. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been a, been a big push. That's what was the genesis of this whole whole uh, rewrite or um, revision was for that specific purpose. Create more housing. is where it said when when you are issued um, your your um, to build or do something like that right. your permit it says that permit is is with your property for for the life of the property but yet it only says that permit is only good for like two years but for the build out for building for for whatever the purpose of the permit was issued for yeah it gives you a two-year window to to complete that but that now, seems really if you don't you just come back and 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 apply for a renewal renewal basically yeah yeah i mean it's just i've known many houses i've been heard of my parents house still being built you know from since 1980. Mm -hmm. well Oh, I see. What and you once mean. it's over a percent complete, then yep. it doesn't matter. That also says right. we did change that to give more flexibility. And we also yeah. said before we had said it had to be done by a certain time. Now we're saying it has to be started. I think is wording that we changed to so, so to try to give that. more. Yeah, because it's just so much. I mean, yeah, gosh, if you're doing it yourself, we had two years of the COVID where you couldn't get nothing. Wow. Well, yeah. So I mean. You, <clears throat> You never know how our economy is going to work or how, you know, things work where there's so many variables in that two-year period. It seems pretty, it would be wonderful if you could build something in two years. It seems that's that would be a challenge. And what it means by staying with your property is, say, you sold your house or your property in a few years, then when someone comes in to do your title search, say they the realtors walk around and you have four outbuildings in a house, then they're going to be looking to make sure you have zoning permits to match those. So that's what they mean by it stays with your house so that yeah. we keep a file. So that way, when, say, you sold your house, people can come and do a title search and they'd be like, oh, great, your eyes, his house is all good and he has all of his permits. And yeah. so that's what they mean by that part. Okay, yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's all. I was curious. Yeah, and actually it's kind of cool is we have, like, by parcel number, so we have the whole history of that property. So even if you didn't build it, as yeah. far back as our zoning so it's yeah. helpful it kind of helps your title stay clean and makes yep. it easier for people if you're going to sell to do a yeah. title search yep. mm -hmm. yeah, I would think there are people with financial constraints so that they wouldn't be able to complete construction within two years well again um, 
they can certainly come back in and ask for, for extension. It's, what would they be told? They would be told, well, I can't say <laughs> myself for the board. I've only known we did have a subdivision out on, far out on North Main Street 10 years ago, maybe a little more than that, that was done prior to our last uh, financial downturn. So it was even more longer than, than 10. It was before 2008, I think. And they came back in 2009. They came back twice for, um, for renewal, which the DRB granted. And then um, it, it just. Well, I'm glad it was. It was never, it was never developed, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And the property's been sold recently, and I don't know what to. But I guess the point I'm making is what's the downside of someone taking more than two years? That's, I guess. Well, I think the intent of that is just if you have a half built house sitting somewhere on the street, um, it's not a great thing to look at, I suppose, is maybe where it came from. Um, but again, if if there's if there's if if there's visual progress, then I can't see where, in my own personal opinion, where where an extension wouldn't be granted. Yeah, it just says that it should be commenced within a period of two years and substantially <coughs> completed within three years, unless construction has been delayed by litigation to secure other permits. If it's a permit that we issued, that Kelly or myself issued, as as a um, permitted use, we've had people come in and say, "Hey, I ran into something," and we're like, "Okay, sure, you know," and just let them renew. It's you know, yeah, it's Vermont after all. We're actually yeah. very user friendly. We don't let you know. It's pretty easy to come in if they have a granted a permit. Then you know people run into stuff, so it's fine. We don't have a problem with that. And the DRB is always flexible, so you know, and can work with people. So yeah, it's important to be flexible, and that's where when you read this. It doesn't say we're flexible off the two years. Well, it can't so because, you know, eventually, you know, <laughs> what happens is if something, unfortunately, if, if I approved a zoning permit and something wrong, then people could appeal to the DRB. But if I, but if the DRB issued a permit and something, you know, someone didn't like the decision or whatever, then it goes to environmental court. And, and again, we're also driven by state statute. So we also have to, um, we just, it's hard to just say we're flexible because that's yes. not a legal definition yes. of, you know, so, yeah. but yeah. So, um, Uriah, would you, if there was a sentence in there saying that um, applicants may apply for an extension? I, I think it, it does say that. In, I, 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 it does say about extensions. I just was saying that this the two years just seemed really, Up front, you huh? know, a real heavy deadline. Okay. For, you know some of these projects that you know. That is. Yeah. A lot of times point. people will get permits and to get a get a, a building built and their contractors stuck at some other job oh. and they couldn't get the thing going and you you wasted a whole year of your time because the guy couldn't even show up. Um, there is a lot of variables that kind of come into that. Yeah, and I think the the extension here is kind of inferred that it's. Um, been delayed by litigation um, to secure other permits. It doesn't doesn't really address whatever other issues might come along. So there might be some wording that could be added to that that would. Yeah, just to, to just I don't know, yeah. just to help with with life because life unforeseeable, unforeseeable things. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll take a look. We'll put it on the list. <clears throat> about a project before you even apply for a permit, talk to the, the zoning people and say, what do I need to do so that if I go before the DRB, it'll go through. Yep. Uh, I mean, yeah. that, you know, that's, then you've got somebody who, who knows the code mm -hmm. forward and back and, and they can help you with that, prepare for that. I actually met with somebody today about that. <laughs> so. Yep. Okay. 
Okay. Anything else that uh, you've you've noticed? Had some good points brought up here. When is your next meeting? In case we do. Well, the next meeting will be. Uh, we haven't said it yet. The select yeah. board's public hearing. Uh, yeah. Because once the DR, when we close the public hearing, the PC will have our meeting, and then we'll discuss these issues. And then this, then the PC has to transfer. It's a whole legal thing to transfer it to the select board, and then the select board has it, and they have to have it for at least 15 days before they can warn their hearing. 15 days later, and this is how the state works. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so I think that it will be June when the select board has their public hearing on the zoning yeah. bylaws. But we'll put out the, you know, if there's a new, if we make any changes, we'll put out a new draft yeah. and on the website and stuff, so. And who makes the final decision, the select board? Select board, yeah. yes. Yep. We did, I certainly did encourage the select board. Obviously they have it, they've read it. That if they had any changes that they thought that they wanted to make that they came to this meeting so that they could discuss them themselves with the PC and then um, once it goes to them, you know, they can make changes. If they make what's loosely termed, I believe, a substantial change, then it can get kicked back to the PC. But, um, you know, so we've tried to encourage the select board to, you know, stay involved as the process goes along so that if there was anything they could talk to the PC But there is directly. no vote by the populace No, on it. No, no. Uh, planning in, Be in, um, in Bethel, you're, it's not voted on. It's not um, Australian ballot by the voters, no. Public questions are not. Well, yes? If someone wants to build a building, who decides what, at what point it's complete? If you build a building and from the outside it's completely complete? Sheds water, roofing, siding, trim work. Yeah, we actually talked about that because yeah. that was my issue. I'm like, how am I supposed to know if this is substantially complete? And I think we ended up coming up with a definition because I'm like, I'm not a builder, you know. So uh, I think yeah. that we, because that was my thing too. I'm like, I, I mean, I have a property that I bought a few years ago and we've been improving it. And we would like to keep improving it. And eventually we're going to build a structure there, but. Mm. Yeah. Build a house these days out of pocket. Yeah, it's, it's tough. crazy money, like Uriah had mentioned. And yeah, you know, I'm just curious if you've got a house, a structure that's completely weatherproof, weather tight. Yeah. Animals can't get in and out. Humans can't get in and out. Well, I'll tell you what it says, and you can tell me if this works. <laughs> so, we we put in a structure is substantially completed when it has all the permitted conditions satisfied, has all major components in place: foundation, roof, siding, windows, electrical, plumbing, heating, and is usable for its intended use. For new construction or permitted renovation, this includes a filing of a certificate that the structure meets. That's with the new standard that the state wants. To, if they, I don't know if they've passed it, the residential energy standards or um, the business ones. So, so basically, this definition is saying that you have to, it has to be usable for its intended use, which means if you're building a house, it needs to be done. You need to be living in it. Or not living in it, but it's gotta be done. I mean, if you had trim work, Painting that's not done, I mean, that's... Yeah, well, I'm just talking about building, like, building the structure. It would be no different than a potentially uh, unfinished garage, essentially. Right. A non-insulated, yeah. non-wired yeah. garage. So it yeah. would be the same type of structures. Where did you find that definition? Here, did we get the it one from you just read to me? The state? At the, we don't know if we, did we get in the state or Kevin Geiger? Because we were, uh, I don't remember. Two Rivers? Maybe from Two Rivers yeah. or. The oh, I'm sorry. Definition. It's on the page. It's under the definitions yeah. under S for substantially, under S, so substantially complete. I, in my draft, it's on page 122. Okay. But yeah, because we struggled with this, because as the zoning administrator, I, you know. I'm not a builder, it's like, <laughs> so, so we came up with this. Uh, so this is how we came up, and, and you can see where it talks about residential energy standards and commercial building energy standards, but. Uh, kind of potentially be back to uh, Mr. Kaus's point where it's what it was 
like you said, if you're going to build something, you talk to the zoning people and find yeah. out how you're going to get it approved. Go that's, to that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Come yeah. In. When have, does the two, you know, how much do I have to have done in two years? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and you could, like we said, you could get, you know, you could renew your permit or. Um, but yeah, that's why we had, you know, we put a definition in there because we had talked about substantially complete and, you know, so. I mean, a lot of the people do when they, they get their money, they'll invest in part of it and they'll go, go get to work and they'll invest in their windows or their door, so. Right, yeah, no, I get the is, process. I have somebody you know, down the street doing the same thing, so a, a line. Yeah. So I, I understand that, certainly. Mm -hmm. You know, in some cases, you, you know, you build as you can. And you know, just enclose it and work on it. Totally get it. Would you know approximately the size of a pond with thirty-five thousand cubic feet of water? In other words, an average pond is usually about overall about seven, eight feet deep. You know, with a dug pond with a shallow area and a deep area. But do, you know, do you, anyone know approximately what that would be? Just, just did that. Went through that process this past summer for a pond that we put in and it's uh, I want to say it's about 40 feet across and it's an it's not a it's a pond so it's 40 feet across and maybe 60 feet I'm and sorry maybe 60 feet 40 60 by, by 60, 40 40 by 60 roughly and and, then, and we're about I'd say we're about 10 or 12 feet deep and that's we should be should be under 35,000 gallons Idea. What happens if you already have a pond that's larger than that? If it's already in existence, yeah. you wouldn't fill need, it in. If you're going to expand it, then you're going to be subject to the. Right. To It'd the be grandfather if it's already there. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yep. What's the average depth of that pond that you built? The average depth? Yeah. Oh, boy. well, it's obviously it goes like this. Yeah, it's probably seven, eight feet. It's not even that. Oh, not I even want that. to say it's probably six. Well, well, six feet average, six foot average, okay. 40 by 60. Now I'm going to do the math and I'm going to come out way wrong. <laughs> no, that's okay. I was just, you know, I, I just saw the cubic yeah. feet figure, so I was wondering how that worked out. I'm sorry? No, I have something oh, you said. It, yeah, it talks about gallons. So even that, you've got to. Oh, oh, oh right. And you got to hold it that, that having just put the pond in, that it'll actually get to 35,000 gallons. Yeah. <laughs> well. Mm -hmm. Yep. You drink a lot of milk. Well, ponds are good. Mm -hmm. They provide habitat for wildlife, and if the fire department um, unfortunately has to come in, they have a source of water. Yeah. As long as as long as they're maintained and and not <laughs> not above other houses. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, another thing I had in Bristol, I asked them. I said, "Can I build a pond? You can do whatever you want." Yes. <laughs> so I built a pond. It was a quarter of an acre. It wasn't a big pond, but I took water from the stream. They didn't want me to impound the stream because of the Middlebury situation, which is fine. Yeah. So I had a, a two-inch spa flex hose because it was gravity fed, because the stream went up uphill. And I gravity fed the water into the pond. It was a standpipe, took the water out. So as much as went in, went out to Middlebury. But uh, they were they went all constraints. I could have put a 10 acre pond. <laughs> yep. So a, a pond that's 50 by 60 by 10 feet would be 30,000 feet. Oh, 30,000 cubic feet. 35,000 cubic feet. No, it would be less than 35. If it's 50 000. by 60 by t average of 10 feet oh. deep. And I, I'm pretty sure we're not going to, we're not going to get there with our pond. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't visualize the 35,000, so I was mm -hmm. just wondering what dimensions would be roughly. Right. Okay, any other concerns that you might have tonight? And again, there is another opportunity, so if you want to continue um, going through it, it's 
select board will have a hearing sometime in June, we presume. So if we do find something in there, can we come right to the town office and talk to you, Therese, about something in here? Yeah, sure. Yeah, come on in, send me an email, whatever. Doesn't have to be, well, send a letter or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll just come in if I'm there, come in. Or um, if I'm not, just, uh, you know, if you have a change written down, give it to Kelly and, and um, take a look at it. But leave, you know, your email or phone number in case I don't have it, Uriah. I, yeah. would, I would want to call you back. Yeah, I'm just wondering about generally people that have any concerns with mm -hmm. this stuff. Yeah, no, we always encourage people to come in if they have questions or... So you don't have to wait for the meeting? Um, no. no, no, no. I didn't, yeah, I didn't mean to infer that. Yeah. No, no, come on Anytime in. you have a question. Yeah, just come in if, if yeah. Kelly, as Kelly's out front, if she, you know, she's the assistant zoning administrator, so if she can't answer, she'll you know, point you in my direction. So, happy to have you come in. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Anytime. Yep. Well, if there's nothing else that you want to discuss tonight, we can uh, close. We'll, we'll close the hearing. Um, but again, I want to make sure everybody has had the opportunity to ask the questions that they want. Um. I'd like to just personally thank all of you for doing this work because it's not easy. Thank you. I know none of you really <laughs> are crazy about doing it. <laughs> they are crazy. <laughs> you are just crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's hard work and it's frustrating at times and uh, I really appreciate you doing it for us. Well, and we uh, very much appreciate the input from the Conservation Commission. You guys worked pretty yeah. closely with us. And, uh, and I'll just say to, the, to everyone what I said earlier to a couple of people, that you went over this document and over this document. I was maybe at four or five meetings, and I saw it happen each time at those meetings. Word for word for word, it was reviewed. So, And we still found it. Yeah. Typo in, in our DRB <laughs> meeting. Yeah. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday night. night. Rick's like, Trees, there's a mistake. And I'm like, oh, Lord, you're kidding. Uh, which is, yeah. It was minor, but it was just funny. But, but yeah, I, I know what? We, and I think it's interesting. I mean, it sounds crazy, but once you get into it, it's actually pretty mm -hmm. interesting. And, and, you know, you get a little frustrated if there's stuff coming down the pike. Like, there might be right now from the state. And we just went through all this to adjust our zoning regulations. And the state is may pass legislation that will make us change, amend the zoning regs. I'm like, that's a little frustrating. But, um, but we'll see what they pass. And Because, um, again, it would be if they pass it, we have no choice. We have to change. We have to amend. So, um, but I don't know. It's pretty interesting. But we're looking for people. So any one of you, we would love to have you on the Planning Commission, DRB, Energy Committee, uh, need people at the shooting range if you're a hunter or, or just, uh, you know, into, uh, you know, for target gun shooting. safety, target shooting. Um, if you have time, we have a committee for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so come on in. Yep, get involved. That's right. We'd love to have you. That's what creates a working town. You know, you have so much difference. You know, you got the mailmans, you got the, you know, the park stores. You know, you got quite a, you know, quite a little town. And it's very fortunate we can run to have our grocery store, have our sandwich shops and pizza places and things yeah. like that. Yeah, and they need our support mm -hmm. because um, if they're not there, we're driving to Randolph. That's right. Our royalty. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much for participating, and uh, keep your eye open. It will be, it'll be warned. It will be in the paper for the select board hearing. It will be on front porch form, on the website, and the revised, the rev revisions that we make again tonight will be on there, too. Yeah. And we're having, still having a planning commission meeting, so just because the public yeah. hearing closes, you know, we still have to meet. So If you want to ha hang around for it, you're welcome, you're welcome to. You're all set. So we will formally close at 734.